My clients contacted me because they purchased a new house after moving from a condo. They thought they wanted to try out condo living, but it wasn't for them. It was too stark and didn't feel warm enough, so they decided they'd move to a slightly smaller house and get in a neighborhood in something they were more comfortable with. I would say this house is probably 60 to 70 years old, but when they bought it, it had been renovated probably in the 90s. So there wasn't a lot of the period pieces left of the original house. The foyer had more wood, the pickets and the newel post were wood, and the railing was white. It was like a weird kind of combo. It was pretty jarring. And the closet wall, which is curved, was covered in like a weird mosaic tile from floor to ceiling. So we actually ended up plastering over the whole thing. Our plasterer did a fantastic job of smoothing out all the curves. And then we added trim across the bottom and then just painted it. We also redid the stairs themselves. We refinished them and then added a runner all the way upstairs. We added a bench for some storage and then we painted everything in here. In the living room, the same tile that was on the closet wall was on the fireplace chimney. So we originally were gonna rip both of those tiles off, but then our plasterer was like, I think I can chip away at it and get it flat with plaster. So he was a very, very skilled guy who spent a lot of time making the walls look good. That was really the focal point in the room. And you can see the fireplace, the wood mantle was existing and the cement, which looked really great. So we wanted to bring it back to the look of the original fireplace instead of building on the tacky 90s stuff. We wanted to add some storage in here. And since we were replacing the kitchen, our mill worker said he could make us units. And we decided to introduce this warm gray color with a hint of blue with brass hardware because we thought it would seem a little bit more transitional against the more traditional fireplace. The window bench was always there. It had a brown and white polka dotted cover. And then it also had brown blinds all around the top, which were in great condition and they were good quality blinds. Window treatments can be prohibitively expensive. Our clients don't use them a lot, so we actually added just a simple white balance over top of them to hide them. So they're still there when our clients need them, but on a daily basis, they're completely hidden. Our clients had a beautiful secretary that I believe belonged to her grandparents, and we love pieces like that, and she wanted to find a home for it, and it's this lovely golden oak. And now that all the walls are nice off-white, it really stands out, and you can really see the quality of the antique piece. It's interesting in this house because some of the stained glass windows are original to the house and some of them were added during later renovations. So they're not all consistent. We tried to consider them, like the ones in the foyer and the living room are definitely original and they're beautiful. Some of the other ones are newer and you can tell they're newer, so they're less appealing. We weren't gonna replace all the windows, they're new windows, but at the same time, you wanna kinda of keep the palette clean so that the stained glass window doesn't seem like really busy in the space. Originally, the dining room had paneling about three quarters way up the wall, and then above that was very textured stucco that really hurt your hand to touch it. And it was in terrible condition, and obviously it was on plaster and lath. So uh, the same amazing trade who covered up the tile, he skim-coated it with plaster multiple times and sanded it down to get it smooth enough to paint. And now, I mean, it looks fantastic. It was a huge change, and it really updated the look of that room. There was this beautiful ceiling detail with the curved corners, which we loved. And we wanted to bring in some fun wallpaper up there and really highlight the ceiling. So we brought in a bold ferron ball wall color above the paneling and then this matching wallpaper just in the ceiling. The paneling was all really dark wood, but it was not in great condition. And there were also two big holes in it on one wall. It was really difficult to figure out a way to fix that without painting it. But our clients wanted to paint it anyways from the beginning and they love the idea of bringing in a lot of color and with the dark wood it can be challenging to still keep things light and bright and bring in color. The kitchen wasn't that old, I mean I think it was 90s maybe, so it wasn't that old and we thought we can probably paint it. But then upon closer inspection, the doors actually had some rustic detailing that was basically like pockmarks in the wood. So to paint that, you were never gonna get an even finish. It was gonna be mumpy. And to properly paint a kitchen, it takes a long time and it's not cheap and cheerful. And our client said, we would rather have a newer, better quality kitchen that has all you know, garbage recycling pullouts and all those details that'll make it more efficient and spend a little bit more money. It got ripped out and reinstalled, I think three weeks later, and then new countertops, new backsplash, new sink, new faucet, new appliances. There's a lot happening. It was wild in here. In the back room, when they originally saw it, they had actually thought they would love a banquette back there, which you know I love a banquette. I'm a sucker for one. Not all brick is good brick. 
And there is some brick that is from 80s, 90s, 70s even, with the weird texture on the front, sometimes with multiple colors. So it really was an easy decision for us to paint the brick. We knew immediately that this would make a huge impact. And those walls actually have a lot of texture to them. So when they were painted, you still get all that beautiful texture and age, but you lose that color, which was so dominating. It's honestly one of our favorite spaces in the whole house. It's such a great spot to hang out. There's a ton of light. It's such a cozy little nook. It was entirely cosmetic changes, but it had a huge impact. There is a tiny bathroom under the stairs. We describe it as like Harry Potter's bedroom in the first book that has quite low ceilings, but it's very cute because you can basically see the structure of the stairs above, which looks very adorable. And we added the same wallpaper from the dining room in there just to freshen it up and brighten it up. It already had really plain subway tile in there and we redid the light in the mirror. So we kept it pretty simple in there, but it's a pretty adorable little space. So they were originally coming home and they were supposed to arrive on a Saturday morning. And so we wrapped up Friday night. We left it styled, flowers, accessories, furniture all in, everything looking great. And then got an email, I guess maybe late that night saying they'd actually were so excited. They decided to drive right through and they arrived late on Friday night and then they couldn't sleep because they were so excited because they basically walked into a brand new house. We had sent them a few update photos, but we didn't show them that much. We just wanted them to be surprised and they were really overwhelmed and thrilled, which is the best possible reaction you can get. It makes our job so fun.